Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. I'm in my office because I forgot to turn my phone off last night and I need to charge it. So there's that. <laughs> Our devotions are coming from Joanna Weaver's book, At the Feet of Jesus. I'm really loving this. This is so great. Um... It is Saturday, June the 11th, so I hope you're having a great weekend so far. Our opening scripture comes from Psalm 116, verse 5. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Let's hear how she expounds on this. Jesus must have been exhausted that long ago evening sketched in Matthew 14. All day long, the crowds had pressed in with their needs. I have a feeling Jesus didn't mind that. It was the very thing he had come to do, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And that passage is found in Isaiah 61, verse 1. But who would heal Jesus' broken heart? His cousin John had been executed just days before and Jesus grieved. For those of you who did not realize it, John the Baptist and Jesus were cousins because Mary and Elizabeth, their mothers, were cousins. Now, as the evening came on, Jesus wanted to be alone. He needed to be alone. Only the Father could comfort this overwhelming sadness and soothe this bone-weary exhaustion. There he is, voices echoed across the water as a long stream of people made their way around the lake. The disciples groaned. Let's send them away, one suggested. But instead of sending the people away, Jesus had compassion on them and healed their sick. That's in Matthew 14, 14. He moved past his own neediness and loved them. He did what he could do to help them. And when he provided dinner for the hungry crowd, fish and chips for 5,000. Oh, and then he provided dinner for the hungry crowd. Fish and chips for 5,000. <laughs> the Greek word Matthew uses for compassion in this passage is, okay, I don't know if I'll be able to say that. Splag nizomai, nizomai, splag, S-P-L-A-G-C-H. I'm not sure how the G-C-H is pronounced in Greek. And then nizomai, it means that Jesus didn't respond to the people out of duty. Okay. He ministered to them because he literally felt their distress in his gut. And that is the essence of ministry that goes out of its way. It puts self aside and reaches out in true compassion. True love hurts, Mother Teresa once said. It always has to hurt. And elsewhere, she has written pointedly, if you really love one another, you will not be able to avoid making sacrifices. And that, of course, is not to say that you're so actively involved in the things you're doing for the Lord that you neglect your, your family and your loved ones as well. Because if you're a parent, if you're a spouse, you do have obligations there. That's why the Bible says it's better to be single, but it's also better to be married than to burn. So there's that. But the Lord in his graciousness, even in his, exhaust, his exhaustion, he was compelled out of his love, not out of duty, not out of obligation. When you are obligated to do something, there's no joy in it. There really isn't. When you do it out of your love and your compassion and your empathy, there's great joy. You are filled. Your cup overflows. Now, our read and reflection, they don't give us a specific one, but use a concordance or a Bible website. Look up compassion and note the instances it is used in reference to Jesus. What do you learn about your Savior? That's a good thing. So if you have a Bible website, gateway, BibleGateway.com is probably a good one. I don't know what kind of Bible study. I know CBN.com has a Bible. You could just look up um, 
there might even be an online concordance if you have one um, or a Bible website and look up compassion. I'm going to do that for sure. But let's, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer because I know that his desire is that we love one another. We've heard that the past love and serve one another. That's how people recognize who the Christians are. Christians are not self-seeking. You just have to read 1 Corinthians 13 to see what how love is defined. And we are known by our love. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for this word. As we dig further, Father God, help us to learn and understand deeper the compassion that you felt for us and helped transform us, Father God that we would be more like you, that we not take it to the extreme to where we are run into the ground and we're doing things out of duty instead of our love and compassion. But Father, I, you know how to bring the correct balance. Give us ears to hear your Holy Spirit's leading and urging. And Father, we give you the glory. Help us to follow the example you present to us in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your morning with me. I hope you're enjoying these. Uh, please comment below. Let me know. God bless you. and Bye until next time.